so excited about this. Please welcome Joe and Nathan Fowler. Please join us! Hey man, well first of all, congrats on the record, that's dope. Are those ostrich, is that what that is? That is. Ostrich is very nice. Um, and uh, Blue suede, you, if you're blue. wondering, blue suede. For, yeah. for Carl Perkins or for Elvis Presley? Who are you honoring there? Elvis Presley. Right, there you go. Yes. Uh, it was awesome at the NHL face-off, just being a part of hockey, was in, growing up in the South. Did you go, I can't wait to open a hockey season? That was uh, always our goal. <laughs> that, was, that was at the top of our list for sure. Yeah. yeah. I've heard much. I mean, I love the record, but I hear much about the welcome back at Kings of Leon. Like it's that you're back. Did it ever feel like you weren't back? I think the public perception was that we, you know, just took a year off and went to the four corners of the earth and never talked to each other and never, you know, spoke. And it was pretty much the opposite. Like we got back to work fairly, fairly quickly. I mean, there was a break of some kind, though, right? A break from the road. Yeah, or something. yeah. There was a little bit right. of a break. For the first time in our career, it was the, it, you have that reflection period where you look back and you go like, wow, so many things have happened that, that I missed because it was so, going so fast, and, you know, and it's one, one tour after another. And then, you know, to be able to sit back and go, wow, you know, I didn't know that we had sold that many records. I, when you have something like that kind of success where you're on the radio all the time, do you have to find a way to replicate it in some other way? No, I'm, I'm the worst at that. I try, you know, if somebody tells me something's a hit, then I usually try to leave it off the record. Um, but why? That's a really... It's so silly. I don't know why. I just, <laughs> it's just this fear of, you know, oversaturating, you know, the market or whatever. But at this point, I mean, we've already had the success, so might as well go for it. So we uh, and when we first we started, when we first started out, like selling out had a totally different definition than it does nowadays. I mean, we got offered a, I won't name the brand, but we got offered a, a commercial ten years ago to be like the first band to put a song on this certain brand, and we were like, no, we can't. You know, we'll lose respect with all of our our fans. And another band did it, and blew up and sold millions of records and made tons of money. If I guess, will you acknowledge it? If you guess what? With a product? I don't even know what he's talking, talking about. No. I assumed it was for the iPod. It was, right? The first Apple. Yeah, yeah the, the first, first Apple. one. Yeah. Because it was right around that. God, that would have been so cool. <laughs> but, but no, we, no regrets, but still. <laughs> but we didn't want to be known as that, that iPod band. Right. And so a band did it, and they got success, and they did that, but still to this day... They're, they're known as the, the iPod band. Now we're known as the idiots that didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last time you were here, um, you guys were in the midst of it, um, and we were talking about what it was like just driving around with your dad and the religion and all that stuff. And, I thought, and it was an interesting conversation because a lot of people got a window into you that we might not have known, and then it kind of went away, the conversation about religion and all that. And then that documentary came out, you guys, and it was front and center again. <laughs> and I, you know, I want to play a clip of it just to talk about it. There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting, and they began to speak in tongues. And the Bible says that the tongue is the most unruly member of the body. It comes back from the book of Joel, he said, with stammering lips and another tongue. Nathan, I've seen him slain in the spirit so many times. The power of God would hit him and he'd just be laying in the floor, just speaking in tongues, not even know. Most rock and roll films about a band's life don't put that in. And you guys, I'm sure, could have taken it out, yeah. but chose to leave it in. I, I hate watching documentaries about bands, and it's just the most glamorous, you know, and it's like they were cool from the moment they were born. Um, but, you know, for us, I mean, we, <clears throat> we executive produced that, so, I mean, there are many, many times where we were watching like this, like, oh, we can't show that. Yeah. But... I just knew that if, if there was another band that had done that, I would have appreciated it. And, and, you know, that's what we wanted to do. For those who haven't seen Speaking in Tongues, it's a really intense experience. It's, um, and you've had that experience? I've had that experience. It's very, um, it gives you cotton mouth yeah. pretty big. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty... Are you it's conscious of it when it's happening? Uh, I think, you know, looking back on it as a kid, I think you kind of emulate... The people around you, you see it growing up, you kind of just, you know, pick out someone and you try to do it the same way they did it. But, you know, there's something 
you know, everyone needs something to believe in. And I think as a kid, you, you can be, you know, influenced in many different ways. And I think that was one of the ways we were influenced, for sure. Thanks for doing the show. Nice job yesterday. Thank what you very fun. much, man. Cheers. Hey, everybody.